The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. Chip Ken Jemen Adolf, it's my name, a mathematics teacher, Form 3. We will begin this lesson with the correction of the previous assignment. So, we had as assignment to find the value of A, 64 raised to the power negative one third. So we have uh, A, 64 raised to the power negative one third. So that, since it's a negative index, you recall that uh, any raised to a negative index is the same as one all over that very thing raised to a positive index this time. So we can write this as one on 64 raised to one, one third. And uh, from the law a to the power m over n, which is the same as uh, the nth root of that a, all of that raised to the power m. We have, uh, we'll take the root of three, so we have 1 on 64, the cube root of that, all of that to the power 1. So we, the cube root of 64 will simply cross 4. So we end up with 1 on, on 4 as your result. That's your solution displayed on your screen. So we had, uh, as the next question, V, to find uh, 27 raised to the power to third, 27 raised to the power to third. So using that law, we will take the cube root of 27, all of that raised to the power two, using that this law. That's what we have. And that will give us uh, the cube root of 27, which is uh, three, all of that raised to the power two, which will be the same as three, uh, 3 times 3, which is 9. So we end up with 9. We end up with 9. Uh, that's the solution displayed on your screen. The next question, show that the square root of 2 and a quarter is equal to 1.5. So you have the square root of two and a quarter. If you change that uh, mixed fraction to an improper fraction, you will have two times, uh, four times two, which is eight plus one, that will give us nine. And we'll end up with the square root of nine on four, which will be the same as the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. And the square root of the numerator is three, while the square root of the denominator is two. So you end up with three over two. And three divided by two will give us 1.5 as required. So that is a solution displayed on your screen. The next question, you have to simplify that expression displayed on your screen. So let's try to simplify that expression. If we have to simplify that expression, we have 5x squared. We have uh, 
y cube times uh, 2, 2x to the power 4. We have uh, y to the power negative 2, all of that on 10 to the power, 10, uh, rather x to the power 6 y. So uh, all of that numerator are linked together by multiplication. So we will consider anything that has the same base, we will add their powers because the addition law says that anything raised to the power m times that very thing raised to the power n will have a to the power m plus n. The first power plus the second power. So if we take x, we will have a uh, 5 raised to the power, 5x to the power 2 plus, we have 4 there. And if we consider y, the first power there is 3 plus negative 2, which will be negative 2, on uh, 10x to the power 6y. So if we do the addition, we'll end up with uh, 5 to the power, yes, 5 to the power 6, and then we'll end up with a y on 10x to the power 6y. Of course, this 5 will go here two times, and this will strike this one, this will strike this one. So we'll end up with a half, which will be our result. Oh, so there's a, uh, we were supposed to multiply the coefficients here to give us 10. 5 times 2 was supposed to be 10. So that was uh, the error I made from the beginning. So to rectify that error, <coughs> we have uh, 5 times 2 there, which gives us 10. And uh, this 10 will take care of this 10. So we'll end up with a one as your result. So that is your solution displayed on the screen. So we'll, we are still in the module numbers and operation in the set of numbers. So we had seen uh, the topic set already in previous videos and uh, we are now we started with uh, indices and logarithms in the last video, uh, the first lesson in the last video, last video, and we are moving on to the next lesson under this uh, topic, uh, indices and logarithms. So, so under this uh, topic, indices and logarithms, we are under the first. Uh, Part, which is a loss of indices and simple equations. We began with the loss of indices in the last lesson. And um, so we are in, on lesson 10. We are on lesson 10. And on our lesson 10, we'll be focusing on loss of indices and simple exponential equations. So laws of indices and simple exponential equations. So as plan of our lesson, we have uh, objectives, we have the prerequisites, we have real life situation, we have learning activity, application exercises, and then we'll wrap up with the assignment. So as objective, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to use the laws of indices to solve exponential equations. So, in order to be comfortable during this lesson, you should be able to write a given number in index form. Uh, you should be able to solve uh, simple linear equations. So um, in order to help us to be comfortable under this uh, lesson, we have prepared some questions uh, to help you to better uh, to, 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 to better be prepared and to be comfortable during this lesson. So we have uh, expressed the following numbers in index form. 
you had 16. If you express, you have to express uh, 16 in index form. You can use uh, two. If you use two, you will have 16 equal to two times two times two. Two times two, which is four times two, which will give us eight times two, which will give us 16. And we'll end up with four two. So we have two raised to the power four. That's your results indicated on your screen. We have a, so we have a, the next question, which is to express 27 in index form. So to express 27 in index form, we can use the number three. 27, we will say as three times three is nine, times three will give us 27. That will be three raised to the power three in index form. So as displayed on your screen. So we have 81 to express as a number in index form. So then now to express uh, 81 in index form, well, we could also use the number three or nine. So we had to use the number nine. We'll have nine times nine, which will give us nine to the power two. That is uh, 81 equals nine times nine, which is nine, uh, nine to the power two. So if we, if we use 3, we'll have 81 equal to 3 times 3, which is 9 times 3, which is uh, 27 times 3, which will give us 81. And that will be 3 raised to the power 4. So if we use 9 or use 3. So solve uh, the following linear equations for values of y and w you have question a which is w plus uh, 3 which is equal to 5 so in this case we will 3 will move since we are looking interested in w 3 will move over to the other side of the equality sign and will become negative so we have w equal to 5 minus 3 and we'll end up with w equals 2 as our result. Okay, and then that is your results. W is equal to two. Um, the next question is one minus one equal to zero. So if you have to carry out that uh, operation to find the value of y, that is y minus one equal to zero. If you add one to both sides of the equation, y will simply be equal to one, that will be your result. So the next question you are supposed to solve for x for the for for x in two x plus three equal to five. So um, if you are to solve that, it's already indicated on your screen, as you could see right there. If you subtract three from both sides of the equation. You will end up with 2x, you end up with 2x equal to 2. And if you divide both sides by 2, you will end up with x equal to 1 as your result. So real life situation. So on examining bacterial cells, a, 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 a medic realized that each cell was undergoing binary cell division as seen below. So you could see the cell undergoing cell division. So you have the number of bacterial cells at any time was modeled by two raised to the power x, where x is the number of cell divisions. At a certain moment, the medic discovered discovers 512 cells in the culture. He was unable to determine the number of cell divisions that are occurred. How can you help him solve this problem? So learning activity number one. So given that uh, 
two p is equal to two raised to the power five. Find the value of p. And then question B, consider the equation 2 to the power y equal to 8. And we write this expression um, 8 in index form. So what's the value of y? What conclusion can you make from A, B, and C? So let's uh, begin. So looking at that uh, first step of our activity, we have 2 raised to the power p being equal to 2 raised to the power 5. So if you look at it very well, you will notice that the base on this side is the same as the base on this other side of the equality sign. And if the bases are equal, and the two expressions are equal, it means that the powers must also be equal. So we say, therefore, our p is equal to 5. So p is 5. So in the next uh, step, you consider the equation 2y equal to 8. 2 to the power y equal to 8. 2 to the power y equal to 8 there. So we write the equation, uh, the, the equation expressing a in index form. So you have two to the power y equal to a. So uh, can the question we are asking ourselves is: Remember the first expression we had two raised to the power uh, p equal to two raised to the power five, and the basis were the same. The question we are asking ourselves: Can we express a as a number with the base two? If we take eight. We can write it as 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which will give us 8. That will be 2 raised to the power 3. So in that case, we can write 2 raised to the power y being equal to, since 8 could be written in this form, we can write 2 raised to the power 3. And since the bases are the same on both sides, therefore, our y will also be equal to 3. That will be your result. So 2 to the power y is equal to that. So y is the value of, what is the value of y? It is 3. So what conclusion can be made from A, and C, A, B, and C? So the conclusion that we could draw is that each time the bases are the same. If the base, bases of the two numbers written in index form are equal, then their powers are equal. So learning activity number two. So you are given uh, that expression, you are given uh, that equation, uh, given that p is equal to three, p raised to the power three, and then uh, two equal to two raised to the power three. Find the value of p. So you have p raised to the power three, equal to 2 raised to the power 3. So you have p raised to the power 3 equal to 2 raised to the power 3. So uh, find the value of p. So here you will realize that uh, in this case, the powers that we have here are the same. So like in the first case that we saw, the first activity, we're dealing with cases in which the bases were the same. And we said if the bases are the same and they are equal, and the two, the two uh, uh, numbers are equal, then the, the, powers will, uh, the powers will also be equal. But in this case, we have uh, the powers being equal. So if the powers are equal and they are also equal, then the bases will automatically be equal. Therefore, we'll say P is equal to, to 2. So in the next step, you have to consider the equation x raised to the power 3, all of that to the power 27. Rewrite the equation with 27 written in index form. We can write 27 using the number 3 in index form, which would be 3 times 3, which is 9, and three times, 9 times 3 will give us 27. So right there, we have 3 raised to the power 3. So we, the expression 
x raised to the power 3 equals 27 could be rewritten as x raised to the power 3 equal to 3 raised to the power 3 since we've seen that 27 can be written as 3 raised to the power 3. And if that be the case, we'll have powers that are equal. And if powers are equal, automatically the base will be equal. Therefore, x will be equal to 3 as indicated. So state the value of x. The value of x has been stated there, which will be 3. So what conclusion can be made from A, B, and C? The conclusion that we could make, the conclusion that we could make is that if two numbers in index form are equal and their powers are equal, then the bases are equal. So recall, in solving simple exponential equations, the following rules are used. So you have the first rule. If a raised to the power m is equal to a raised to the power n, you, you realize that the bases are all a, then the powers are equal. m is equal to n. And if we have another case in which uh, a raised to the power n is equal to another number raised to the power m, so you have different bases, but equal powers, then automatically the bases will also be equal. A will be equal to B as indicated. So application exercises. Solve the following exponential equations. So you're expected to solve the following exponential equations. The first equation that we have on our screen there is a 3 raised to the power 2x equal to 9. That's what we have. So in order to do this, we must also express this side in index form. So in expressing this side in index form, we can write it as 3 raised to the power 2. 9 is 3 times 3. So we can write 3 to the power 2x which will be equal to 3 raised to the power 2. So if the bases are equal, we can equate the powers. So we have 2 raised to the power x being equal to 2. And if we divide both sides by 2, we'll end up with x equal to 1 as our result. So that will be our result, and the solution is displayed on your screen. So let's move to the next question. The next question, question B. The next question, question B, you have 3 raised to the power 2x being equal to 3 raised to the power x plus 5. So here the bases are already equal. All of both sides are expressed in the next form. So the bases are equal, will automatically equate their power. So we'll have 2 x being equal to x plus 5. We are interested in x, so we bring like terms together. This x is positive, it moves over to this other side, it becomes negative. We will have 2 x minus x, which will be equal to 5. And 2 x minus x will be x, which is equal to 5. So our result is 5. That's your solution displayed on your screen. So we have the next question too, which is given as 4 raised to the power 2k being equal to 2 raised to the power 3k plus 1, as indicated. So we have uh, 4, that is our c, 4 raised to the power 2k being equal to 2 raised to the power 3k plus 1. So we have numbers expressed in index form, but their bases are not equal. So could we make any of these bases to be like the other? 4 is bigger, so we could express 4 in terms of 2, with the, of the base 2. So we could write this as 2 raised to the power 2, all of that raised to the power 2k. Because 2 raised to the power 2 is 4. So which will give us 2 raised to the power 3k plus 1. 
and uh, from the law of indices a raised to the power m all of that to the power n if we have a power out and a power inside we multiply those powers so we end up with a to the power m times n so here we are going to multiply 2 times 2 which will give us 2 raised to the power 4 k all of that being equal to 2 raised to the power 3 k plus 1 and since the basis on both sides are not equal will equate their powers also. So we'll have 4k being equal to 3k plus 1. So we are interested in k. So if we bring like terms together and this 3k moves over to this side, we'll have 4k minus 3k being equal to 1. 4k minus 3k is of course k and our k is equal to 1. That's our result. That's the result displayed on your screen. We have question D. We have question D. Question D was given as uh, m raised to the power 5, all of that equal to 3 raised to the power 5. In this case, the the powers are equal and the bases are given differently. So if they are if this since this expression, uh, this m to the power 5 is equal to 3 to the power 5, and their powers are equal, automatically they will, the base will be equal. Therefore, m will be equal to 3. So in the next question, we had find the values of x, given that x raised to the power one third is equal to four. x raised to the power one third is equal to four. So you have uh, to find that question E. x raised to the power one third being equal to being equal to to four out there. So we're expected to find um, the value of x for which uh, that is uh, 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 possible, or which that is possible, where we have uh, uh, something that will give us uh, that. So can we, um, if we express uh, here, the, the, can we, if we express, uh, uh, if we express, um, that expression like that, all of that raised to the power 3 as indicated here if we take x to the power 1 third, all of that raised to the power 3 we should also raise this other side to the power 3 and if we do that we'll have uh, uh, powers that are, are equal or if we multiply these powers rather, sorry we will end up with x because 1 third times 3 will be 1. So we'll end up with x. And 4 raised to the power 3 will give us 64. So we are expected to solve, in the next question, we are expected to solve the problem faced in the real life situation. You remember the magic found himself uh, with a uh, 512. Uh, 512 cells. So you wanted to know the number of uh, cell, division, cell division that has taken place. So, and it was modeled by 2 raised to the power x. So if we took 2 raised to the power x to be equal to 512, and express uh, that uh, 5 raised to the power 12 with the base 2, he will have a uh, 2 raised to the power 9, or on the other side, that is uh, 2 raised to the power x will now be equal to 2 raised to the power 9. And since the bases are all the same, the powers will definitely be equal. So x will be equal to 9. So hence, there are exactly 9 cell divisions. So that's your assignment to help you better understand or keep what you've learned today as you practice it. So our next lesson will be on the loss of logarithms. <laughs>